Yo, welcome back to the Larry O Show. This is an FL Studio podcast for FL Studio users and all music production content related stuff. Here we go. We got my co-host. It's John Phelps. And I'm Larry O. Welcome to another episode. If you're new here, we do a weekly giveaway. So in this episode, there's going to be a keyword and I'm going to be picking five people to win every single one of my FL Studio and music production courses. We're also going to be announcing last week's winners in this episode. So stay tuned for those things. Um, and we got a lot of gems to go over. Mm-hmm. We got some cool segments that we're going to get into. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, I, I was looking before I came here because I wanted to talk about it. And I could not find it for the life of me. I even asked Josh and he said, yeah, it's out. FL Studio Beta 3. Mm. They're not on release candidates. So maybe they're making. Remember we talked about that? And I was like, sometimes I don't right. know if they do a three. Apparently they're doing a three or they have. But I, for the life of me, could not find the updated beta i looked mm. all in the in the forums i wish have you ever looked at a forum like no any kind of forum <laughs> no nah, like reddit is the most of my forum and that's way more organized i think yeah i think yeah. like the forum like thing i don't know i'm it confuses the hell out of me like right. in there i don't know how to search i don't know how to look things up i don't know like what I, it's i don't know what what i'm looking at sometimes i'll like i was in the thread mm. i was in like the the insta not the the image line forum, right? And I'm looking at it and I'm like searching FL uh, 21.3 beta 3. Right, right, right. right. Couldn't find it. Only two was in there. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to go. And I've done that before with even the the other two betas. And I would go to Google, searching on Google. So it would pop up in a Google search. It would bring me directly to the link. That's like the best, the easiest way for me to do it. But for the life of me, I couldn't do it. But I know there's a a ton of bug fixes. People were talking in there about the the three and some of the bugs that there were that they had in there. Mm. But I'm curious to see because I really wanted to see if uh, Kepler XO had the presets. That was the main thing I was looking for because I assume like either in beta three or release candidate one or two, they're gonna start to have the the presets in there. So I was really like looking forward to talking about mm. or going through the presets, but. How come, uh, like, it. what would be the difference between, like, a beta release and, like, just a regular update that you would get, like, a notification of when you open FL? Beta is just, it's a separate upload. It's a separate, like, download and everything. Like, oh, if you right. if you install FL beta, mm-hmm. 21.3 beta, oh, okay. it won't overwrite the current copy of FL you have right now. It, it'll be alongside it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's going to take up some more room, but... It's a completely different thing. That way you could just get rid of it when it's done. Right. When the update comes out, there's a lot of people. That's a good question to ask, too, because there's a lot of people that have been in my comments on YouTube and Instagram asking, I don't see the update. I updated my FL and I don't see the chord generator. So like, kinda, because that's yeah, yeah. a separate download. Right. Like you got to like download that separate with a separate link. So are they testing? So that's, oh, what, yeah. I mean, that's why it's oh, yeah. beta. They're testing certain yeah. stuff over to bring into yep. the Well, they know updates. that those are going in there. They're just mm. testing it to get... Everybody in the forums, essentially, that's really where everybody's at. Oh, okay. The forum is jam-packed. You would be, like, shocked at how many people are in the forums. It's yeah. nuts. That's why it's so confusing, too. Right. There's so many they threads. they pile on. Bro, it's it gets nuts. lost in the thread. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's where they get all the bugs. Everybody's putting screen uh, screen recordings in there, screen mm. caps of all bugs. Hey, I just saw In The Mix. I don't know if you know In The Mix, mm. but he's, like, a really popular YouTube FL power user. He's, I would love to have him on. It would be so dope. Um, but he, he he's in there, and he's, like, putting a little bug fix on, uh, I think it was Kepler. It might have been Kepler XO of, like, one of the knobs, and it was something so little. Right. It was, like, a low, mid, and high knob, and he was going to the mid knob on, on Kepler, and he was, like, turning the knob up, and you could see it was working. And then he would go to the high one, and it was turning the mid up. But if he moved just slightly over to the right, oh, yeah. the high yeah, one would be working. locked in. Right. So little tiny bug, even little bug fixes like that, bro, everybody's on top of and everybody's talking about it in the mm-hmm. forums, which is wild. That's how big and how crazy this community is. Right. <laughs> it's nuts, bro. It's wild. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's think, free. They just got oh, a community man, tapping in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You, ha- you literally <laughs> have a giant community of testers. Yeah. That's and dope. I'm sure like before anything really goes public, they have the alpha. Mm-hmm. So that there's a very, very select it's probably just the team that does alpha, mm-hmm. I, I'm assuming. And um, then it goes beta, and then it's in the forums right away. But they don't announce that. That's how crazy the forum is. There's no newsletter that goes out about beta. There's nothing. There's nothing. It's strictly a forum post. And if you're in there, 
you see it. And if you're not, you don't. <laughs> or like, you know, people like me are going to talk about it. And people, YouTubers are, will talk about it because it's, you know, it's exciting news. Mm. But uh, yeah, I I wrote down a, a new little segment I think we could do. Yeah. A new, not, I, I don't think it's that. new. We've done it, right? We've done verses. I the, think so. We've like we've this verse done it that. in beta. <laughs> yeah, we've done it in beta. We did. It was probably beta, the beta episode. <laughs> that first episode or the second one, those are beta episodes. <laughs> but we just dropped them as release Debatable. candidates. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I'll pick a couple. You do a couple. Yeah, I'll cool. ask you a couple. You ask me. All right. So I'll do two and then you do give me two. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right. So this is versus if I didn't even mention that. So we're going to do like something like this versus that. Uh, we've done it in the past where it was FL Studio stuff, but it's going to be music production stuff, pretty much anything. One shots versus VSTs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose one shots. One shots. I like one shots. Shout that's out Humphy. <laughs> yeah, that's my shit right there. Like, I've been fucking more and more with the, the one shots just because more control. Yeah. Yep. I love one shots, bro. We can't talk about one shots enough. The box. Yep. <laughs> the box. <laughs> All right, MIDI packs versus sample packs. So what I mean, you know what I mean mm -hmm. by that, right? Yeah. MIDI packs that you download, you just drag and drop MIDI files in, or sample packs where you have loops. And I mean, you could even count drum packs too, because right. those are technically samples. So MIDI packs versus sample packs. I'll do sample packs. Sample packs. 100%. All right, yeah. I got gotcha. you. I love that. I love chopping them up. I do love MIDI packs though. Yeah. That's the thing. I love dropping MIDI in there. Mm-hmm. And just like, but if I had to only use one, like they were just like, yeah, I, I know, make a choice and be like samples for That's me. That's why this is hard for me. Samples for me, because yeah. I'll just distort them and make them crazy, make one shots out of waveforms and all that, like make sense out of it's wave, true. you know, samples and stuff. You yeah, know? you do have more freedom with sample if you mm. had to choose a sample pack over a MIDI pack for sure. That's just like my, yep. that's just my vibe right there. Hell yeah. Um, all right, so this is one I thought of on the way over here. All right. <laughs> uh, Real time or double time for your for your beats? Real time or so double like time? So like 70 BPM versus 140. Oh, 140. Yeah. All day. I don't know why. And people, yeah. sometimes people look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> like 140 BPM? Isn't that fast? I'm like, no, I'm not going. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing double time drums. Mm. I'm doing double time tempo. I click, love. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I think, you know what it is really? It's FL Studio's fault. Mm. Because FL Studio by default has always been... Back in the day, this is a this is a funny thing. Just to go on a little bit of a <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> got yeah. a little bit of a rabbit hole. <laughs> FL Studio, what was their default tempo back in the day? You know what it is now, right? One thirty. They've had a few t default tempos. I remember one twenty was for a while. Right? There it is. That was it. One twenty. Yeah. One thirty and one forty. Yeah. It's been those three default tempos. Mm -hmm. So I've always been in that double time. Yeah tempo because fl studio has just always been there so when i open up fl for the first time not knowing what the hell to do with anything mm. i would just start a beat with what it is i that didn't even probably yeah. know that i could change that at, at that time you know what i'm saying <laughs> all beats are yeah all, all my beats are 120 <laughs> <laughs> every single That's one of them yeah. but yeah so i like I'm, a good like 141 142 yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like go yeah go a little yeah. bit weird with it Yep, so uh, I, I, time. I, I saw this like video of Jay Cole in the studio once where he was like, um, they were work they did something in real time, but he was like, Oh, what's that BPM? And they were like 70. He was like, make it like 72. Mm. And I was like, oh. And like it was a finished song. That makes a difference. Yeah, but they just took like the the like the waveform basically of the song and were like, make it 72. Mm. And I was like, dang. With vocals that, and everything? Yeah, it was the, wow. full, the full thing. Get out of here, And that really? changed my, like, worldview. I was like, Did damn, they're not even in session. No, he didn't do anything. Wow. He just took the whole thing in Pro Tools and probably just went. Wow, that's yeah. wild. And yeah. two is enough to where it's not going to make a voice or a vocal sound, like, crazy distorted yeah. or anything. Yeah, it'll just make them sound, like, a little more high-pitched, but. You're probably speeding the song up a little bit, too. So maybe if you're going from, like, a three, if it's, like, say it's three minutes, 15 seconds, you mm -hmm. might go to, like. 302 or maybe even under three yeah depending on you know right i guess and music like music's interesting because i feel like what becomes popular on like socials and all that stuff and streaming it's like it kind of fluctuates between times and all that like i remember for the longest time when i was first learning about music and stuff kind of like the three and a half minute was mm. like the standard yeah and i feel like it's i feel like it's kind of getting back to that 
But for the longest, it was like two. Yeah. It was like two minutes. It you was. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and get like with all the stuff on social media, like 30 seconds is what a lot of people are paying attention to, anyways. And yeah. like a piece of advice I give people, like when they're chopping their music up into content, is like when I hear the song, I obviously want to like start the clip at the one, you know, end the clip at like the end of the hook or whatever. But like one piece of advice I got was like, cut the content off before you kind of are thinking it's going to cut off. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like you can predict that it's going to come, cut it a little bit before that. Mm. Cause it kind of gets like, you know, psychology. Yeah. I wonder how much of that, like you, you, you mentioned like the two, two and a half minute thing, right? I wonder how much of that is people saying like my songs have to be under three minutes versus like people creating music for content instead of the music first, if mm. you know what I mean by that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So they're creating, like, these shorter clips of music, and then they're like, yo, this thing popped off. Let me, like, finish it, or let me just drop what I had. It could And be it's, that, like, a minute yeah. and a half, or it's, like, two minutes and 15 seconds. Because be that's that. all they created for social media. People also, like, uh, like a lot of hyper-pop stuff is at, like, a higher BPM, mm -hmm. and it'll be, like, 160. So, like, the songs will naturally be short anyways. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like... Even with, like, punk music back in the day, them songs were, like, mad short, too. Yeah, they were. And that was music made by, like, the youth and stuff. Yep. So it's always kind of been this, like, emphasis mm -hmm. on cutting down the fat, being shorter, being faster, mm -hmm. like, you know. So it's yeah. just interesting how it kind of all fluctuates like yep. that, you know? Yep. Um, the second one I had was uh, melodies first or drums first when you're making a beat? Oh, for me, it's... It's melodies first, if I had to choose one. Mm -hmm. Melodies first, because that's just what I do naturally, I think, 90% of the time. I think I mentioned it in the last episode. If I'm stuck, if I have beat block, I'll, I'll try drums first. Or if something inspires me, like a sample or a sound. Right. But, yeah, melodies first. Hell yeah. Melodies first. I've been with drums first. I know. You you mentioned that, too. So like I'll, I'll, like, hear a song, and I'll be like, oh, let me just, like, imagine this tempo real quick. Write like write a song to like that tempo. Put the drums in real quick. Mm -hmm. Record the vocals at like a pitch a pitch that I like, and start just dropping samples in, and then That's swapping fire. them out. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. That's been my creative process lately. Yeah. Actually, you feel like you're I, making different sounding songs that way. Um, I, probably yeah. yeah. That you know that's kind of the that's kind of the point. Yeah, that's the point. You know what I'm saying? Like just kind of like, um, getting it like getting the feel. You know what I'm saying? With with whatever you're making, getting the feel right. So, like, you're making the drums, getting the feel right. Good enough to get the vocals on there, getting the feel right. Mm -hmm. Then you put a sample on top of that, and you're getting the feel right again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like triple feel. And yeah. as an artist and a vocalist, yeah. do you find it... I think... I, I guess it's, it's something interesting for any vocalist or any artist out there that are, like, just trying to do something different. Try, I, I would suggest them to try that because what mm -hmm. that's doing is, like... You're not stuck with a melody, and you're not right. you're not basing what you write off of a melody, right? Right. Especially right. if you're rapping, you're rapping off of the rhythm section mm -hmm. more times than not, right? So I think making just a rhythm section is huge, I, and and trying to just like, I guess, write your lyrics to just the rhythm section versus right. like having you know, all these melodies on top of one another. I almost imagine like. You know how people make mashups on like TikTok and stuff? Yeah. It'll be like song mashups. Yeah, well, I like almost a imagine acapella that. with the instrumental. Yeah, yeah. Mean? Almost yeah. like it'll be like some hard ass like gangster rap, yeah. but with like a Final Fantasy yeah. piano sounding yeah. thing. And like just a mashup vibe. And I was I, I was kind of inspired by that where I was just like, it would be cool to have a song that sounds like a mashup already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. So I was like, let me just like get the drums right. And actually I read Gucci Man's auto bio, mm -hmm. and he talked about how like he had so many ideas in the studio that he would just like tell him put the click on and he would just go, mm. and then they would make the beat around it. Yeah, and I was like, that's kind of in kind of interesting. I like making beats like that. Yeah, bro. yeah. I don't know if we've talked about that on this pod yet, mm -hmm. but I've talked about it in the past, and I love making music around an acapella. That's fire. Like it's I would tell fun. like. I don't know. I we might have done it in the past where you've probably recorded something and we just stripped mm -hmm. away everything and then created stuff. But I know like with with Piffin, Peter Piffin, I definitely have done that because he's For recorded sure. he he's just like on a you know fast paced firing off mm -hmm. songs and he just will find things on YouTube, record on them the, with the vibe that he thinks. 
and then he'll send me that. Mm -hmm. I'll just completely get rid of the, that YouTube beat. I'll get the tempo and the key, and mm -hmm. then just completely delete the beat. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't it doesn't motivate me and inspire me in any way to create like that. But I got the key and I got the tempo, and then I'm just going off a straight vibe. Right. And I'm creating every single element <laughs> around yeah, an acapella. Yeah. It's almost like how I used to remix. What yeah. remixing got me into that back when I was doing a lot of like EDM stuff, <laughs> and I would like I would remix a bunch of songs. Yeah, yeah. And that from doing that, I'm like, yo, why don't we do this with our original songs for sure create it like a remix because these remixes i feel like are some of the best things that i've created at that time and i'm like i don't know i we did that remix with you remember that remix back in the day best friend best right? friend yeah yeah that i feel like is one of my best beats ever yeah to this day I'll, that beat once is in a while, insane i'll go and listen to that i'm like yo how did i do this <laughs> yeah and i'm and it's a lot has a lot to do with just like creating around the vocal mm-hmm and just, I don't know, I just feel like I got so creative with that Yeah, one. and you hear, like, you hear differently. Like, when yeah. all you have is the vocal, you're hearing, like, different things that you can kind of go off of for yeah. inspiration. Yep. So I feel like that, that's that been my approach lately is just, like, get something good enough for the vocals to go over, which when you're working in rap, it's, like, rhythm. You know, mm -hmm. get, the, get the drums right. And yep. then, like, I just, and I, I've been loving a lot of beats that don't even sound like music like you know mm. what i'm saying like they're just insane yeah like danny brown put out a album and what he he got a beat by the alchemist uh that just is just crazy it's like noise basically mm. and he's just rapping over it and like he probably recorded over that because he's just the goat like yeah. that but like the fact that you can just like kind of sub out the beat and make like a whole joint around it is just fantastic yeah, it's so, awesome yeah um before we go too deep into this um I do have more that I want to talk about, but I wanted to announce the winners from last week's episode. You want yeah. to do the honors this week? Sure, yeah. So you just go to the last episode on YouTube, and um, I know there's a ton of comments in there. So five winners. Drum roll. Keep it going. <laughs> Sorry, I'll Keep it going. I'll, I have no signal. I'll, I'll, I'll edit. <laughs> I'll just edit me on a loop doing that. They continue to amaze us 23 hours ago. Let's go. I'm getting an ad about... Poop. <laughs> Literally. The guy's telling about. I've been on YouTube shirt. Premium so long, I forget. I forgot ads. One, uh, one I kind of want to do that now. Bro, I could never, ever go back. Go back. Dude, I, I can never go back to yeah. having, not, not having premium. It's it's messed up when, like, you watch podcasts and stuff, or, mm. like, uh, an NPR Tiny Desk will be, mm. like, a smooth jazz yep. performance, and then they'll just put, like, a loud-ass yeah. ad in the <laughs> yeah. middle of it, and, like, great. Yeah. Thanks for, you know, interrupting that. Yep. All right, let's scroll. All right, so five winners from last week's episode. The keyword was sprinkler, right? Yes. So yeah. last week's keyword was sprinkler. Five winners are going to win a copy of every single one of my FL and music production courses. Good luck. Linux rides. Needs a sprinkler for his lawn. <laughs> there you go. So, I like when they hide it in a sentence. Yeah, yeah me that's too. That's awesome. I Keep love that. Keep that up. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so Linux rides. Linux rides. First yeah. winner. Second winner is Cat is fact. Cat you, is uh, fact. Cat is fact. Why did the sprinkler join the music production team? Because <laughs> it knew how to make every track flow smooth. Right, Yo, bro. they made a joke. Yeah, just, I mean, give you the tomatoes give... in the chat for that <laughs> one, bro. <laughs> Yo, but <laughs> applause in the chat at the same time because not only did he hide it in a sentence, he hid it in a joke. Right. A dad joke. Terrible joke. But, <laughs> but a cat, joke. cat is fact. Cat is not a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but tap in for your, your master class. All right, let's scroll. Winner number more. three. Number three. Sprinkler, you get me. Cash mm. Kings. Cash Kings. 8268. Eight. Tap in. Congrats. And winner, winner number four. <laughs> Sprinkler mm -hmm. by Nuft, Nuft, Nuft Talon Music. Nuff Talon music. Tap in. Nuff Talon. Winner number four. Winner number five is. Sprinkle me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Lucci, Lucci Pizzo. <laughs> 502. You're Italian? Hey. Lucci over Pizzo. Here. How you doing? Get your master class, all right? Lucci Pizzo. How you, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. But yeah, Lucci Pizzo, brother. Out of those five winners, if you heard your name, DM me on Instagram so I know it's you, and I will send you the links to all of those courses. 
Um, all the winners have been reaching out on Instagram. I feel like that's just like the easiest way. Uh, when we do the premieres on this, what you're watching right now, I mean, if you're watching this on the premiere, uh, a lot of people will listen and, and hear the winners, uh, the names get called out that way, which Let's is awesome. Go. There was just one thing that I wanted, to, I've been wanting to talk about, right? Mm. For the longest, and it always slips in my mind, but I wrote it down today finally. You know, there's one thing that every FL studio, I feel like under the sun, <laughs> wanted so bad that they were like probably emailing the CEO of Image Line every other day about it. People even started making their own is custom themes. Mm. But you know what happens? Like they wanted these custom themes so bad for FL Studio. And now I feel like nobody is, number one, nobody's using them really. Mm -hmm. And nobody even cares about them. But it was one of the most requested things from FL Studio for the longest time. For I'm talking like at least five years straight. Everybody's yeah. like, when are you dropping custom themes? We need custom themes. It even got to the point where I feel like people started making them on their own. And it was technically against the rules and conditions maybe of FL. And yeah. people got in trouble for it, I think. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's and then one of they those just stole that idea and was just like, and oh, then we'll make a bag off this now. But well, they Eat they it. wanted to do it because people were talking about it and requesting it like ridiculously, yeah. like in the comments of every video. They sent eight dudes to jail, bro. Put three on the image line <laughs> team under contract. <laughs> like you gotta give us the the codes. And then they got it, <laughs> and now I feel like nobody even cares about it. Right. It made some buzz when that version of FL dropped. It, it definitely was a huge topic of conversation, and people were talking about it. But now yeah. it's like, I've have, never messed with the theme thing. I don't even know how to do it. Yeah, you just it, it's easy. I mean, you, you go what to, is it in uh, <laughs> settings? It's in something? options. You go, yeah, it's just in options. You go to theme settings. Oh, huh. so like where everything else is, it's just there. And now they haven't up. This is the other thing too. Like maybe maybe an update on these would be awesome. I think. You can, but the thing is too, like you can create your own custom themes. I even created uh, a bunch of free packs and just dropped free custom themes. There you go. That I made for the, you know, just for the community. But then it's just like, I mean, people, I feel like at the end of the day, they're realizing, hey, we just want to make music. We don't want to mess with these custom themes. Yeah. You know I, what I mean, by the time I'm opening the program, I'm not like thinking about like coloring it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, let can me it make set this the beat vibe? Right can it, for set sure. It, yeah. Can it set a different vibe? I mean, it can. Like they got it. Have you seen this, the citrus theme? Mm -mm. There's a legit citrus theme. <laughs> so, like, let me show you. Like the VST or the yeah. fruit? Yeah. The, like, fruit, the fruit style. Like the VST. <laughs> the so genre like, of fruit. So. And then if you, oh, okay. even like the background image gets cha got changed to the citrus logo. So like, see how the channel rack switches up. Different. Yeah, you want to see the why worst? I would do that? You want to see like the worst <laughs> yeah. one ever? Yeah. <laughs> the whiteout one. This one will give you an aneurysm. <laughs> you, if, you, if you're looking for an aneurysm, here it is. Oh my god. That's like when you open the the light. <laughs> 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 My oh, eyes, man. and then damn, the, and, damn, hey, it's hard. It's that shit hurts. It's That's legit. like inverted vision. Yeah, bro, like, it's legit hurting my eyes right now, and I'm not even that close to it. <laughs> Where are you at? Playlist? You want to? If I'm laying in my bed with the, they, do they have like dark mode on their uh, their thing yet? Yeah, like if you want to overnight, yeah. like it, it, like past a certain hour of the day. Oh, not like automatically. That would be crazy. That would be crazy, but no, not yet. Not yet. Anyway, but. But they got like my favorite one was oh, like my favorite like default one was this one. I love this one. I left it on this one for a long time. Like that's just it's that's it's cool. simple. Green FL logo in there. I think that one's pretty cool. How do you change the background image? Um, you right click or something. You would go to theme settings and then, I believe, I want to put a big hairy man for mine. <laughs> <laughs> I forget, but you can. <laughs> You have to drop it in the folder a certain way. I've done it because I've right, dropped, right, like I right. said, I've dropped uh, a bunch of these packs. Mm -hmm. If you drop it in the folder a certain way, the, the right, in, you have to do it like in the right combination. It's it's weird. <laughs> but if you do it, if you drop the image in there it's the right way, it'll, um, it'll pop up in the background. Hmm. Or you can just like, you can even like change the background image, I believe. There was always uh, an option to do that. I want to well. change mine and my logo. You can do that. Yeah. It would be a cool segment to go into, like, the forums or whatever and just, like, feature people's, like, packs or whatever that they drop. Like, different stuff that people, hey, I made these uh, 
these mastering plugins or hey i dropped these skins like whatever like an image know? line for them yeah that could be kind of cool if i can find i'll find like because i'm telling you bro I'll, we'll be here until six o'clock if i try to find them <laughs> it's hard bro yeah it, yeah it's it's very confusing right but if i can find some some stuff like yeah, that next I'll time you're in there and it like something that's just yeah. cool I think that would be cool to like feature somebody's somebody's work. Oh yeah. Because I like what I like about FL is so much of it is um almost like an open source kind of feel to it where people are like contributing to it actively and it's getting like built up at such a exponential rate at this point. Mm -hmm. So it'd be so it would be really cool to feature people that are active contributors to you know like in the community. Yeah. Give some shine to people that maybe they don't have like a YouTube channel, but they just do it for the love of the game. Yeah, you know? I love to I love to do that. A good place probably to find something like that would maybe ah, it might be Discord would be the yeah it might be a mix of things like I don't know if Image Line had the forums and Image Line have any of that mm. it would be cool if they did right but I know like people have their own Discord communities that do that kind of stuff and in their servers they have channels where a bunch of people do that same thing mm -hmm. like Frank Pohl for instance he talked about it when he was on he obviously he does that himself. But he mm -hmm. also has a community that also does it. So he was saying right. that at some point in that interview, he was like, my community has made this X, Y, and Z patch or preset because they follow him and they watch him make the presets. Mm -hmm. So now he's got a whole community of people making their own presets for patcher. So I think like going into forums like that or going into like servers and discords like that, I think would be awesome. Frank Poles should be the first one that we do because that's fire. I'm just not savvy with discord, but we can do it. Because if you want to get better at something... All you have to do is allocate like an hour of your day yeah. each day to doing nice. it. So it's just like, you know, put it in your schedule, repeat literally every day and just be like <laughs> in Discord. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. That's yeah, that's I mean, that's how I've gotten better at anything, anything. that I've yeah. You know. Literally anything. Yeah. People say how to get better at something. Yep. Just do it every day. Yeah. It's even a, if it's, it's literally everything. It doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah. I mean, I just for instance, not even non music related stuff. Like I've just started playing hockey again a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten ridiculously better i mean i'm horrible still but like <laughs> i've gotten so much better at skating and playing yeah and just understanding hockey since i started a year ago right because i go you know that's my form of exercise right now i go multiple times a week mm -hmm. i pay attention to things i want to get better at it that's the other thing that's too it's like you got to want to get better at it for sure you can't just stand there and just kind of like float around expecting to get better because you're there mm -hmm. so it's like it's one of those things same yeah. with music production you can't just expect to get better if you're just like sitting with FL Studio open and just staring at the screen, <laughs> you have to actually dive into it. You have right. to actually like watch some videos or set up like some podcasts. little uh, mini goals and games and like yeah. objectives. Like even if I'm not in the studio working on music per se, I'll still be in the studio like listening to music and I'll be like, all right, I'm just listening for inspiration or I'm listening because I want to find something to sample. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like everything kind of goes back to the original goal of getting better as a yeah. producer or as a music maker or mm -hmm. anything like, or a hockey player. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm and gonna... the fact that you're just so passionate and that you love it so much, you're probably more times than not, like not even really thinking of like, oh, like I, I want to get better at this. You're just doing it. Yeah. And you're naturally just, like just showing that up because you love it. Yeah. That's the other thing. If you feel like, I feel like if you feel like you have to really push yourself a lot, sometimes don't get me wrong. No matter how much you love something, you're going to get to the point where you you have to feel like you're going to have to push yourself a little bit more and you're going to have to force yourself to get in there mm -hmm. and do the work. But if you feel like there's like, you know, more than half the time you're doing that and you're forcing yourself, maybe you don't love it as much as you think you want to love it. Right, right, You know what right. I'm saying? That's yeah. the other thing a lot of people don't. It, it takes a long time for people to come to terms with that aspect. Mm -hmm. Like they want to have the passion for production, for instance. Like mm. they want to have that passion, but maybe it's just not there. Maybe that form of music just isn't there they love music mm. it's maybe it's just not for them at that point but it's like if you feel like you're having to force yourself every day to do it <laughs> you might not love it as much as you think you do yeah and you, you know it's that, that you mentioned in gary v he met he he put this one quote out one time and i'll probably i'm probably getting it like wrong a little bit but procrastination and laziness is almost like a good thing because it tells you what you don't what you don't love and it tells you what you're not passionate about. Mm. Like once you start being lazy with something, you might not be as passionate about whatever that is. Right. Somebody might correct me, but that's not the exact quote, but that's like the gist of what he was talking about. Right. It tells you what you don't love. That's it tells true. You what you don't like about something. That's true. I think I think for some people, 
people will procrastinate because they're afraid. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will procrastinate because they're almost like afraid of True. like succeeding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're afraid of like succeeding and the pressure that that comes with or they have their own like whatever personal personal thing but yeah if you i mean that's a good i think that that's a good way to inspire yourself yourself not to procrastinate about the things that you want to do like you're just like if i'm procrastinating it but i do want to be a like a bodybuilder you know what i'm saying then i'm going to push myself through this procrastination type mm -hmm. beat because that's <laughs> like what <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean yeah yeah because <laughs> i want to be better at this like Everything comes with a sacrifice, and sometimes the sacrifice is, like, just, you know, uh, a Friday night in your studio instead of going out. Yeah. Or sometimes it's just showing up on a day that you, like, don't feel like being there. Because there are those days for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but that's what makes you able to be proficient at something, mm -hmm. is when you can do it when you're not in the zone to do it. I think uh, I think it's keyword time. Keyword time. What's it going to be this week? What's it going to be? You want to do the <laughs> honors of that too? So you pick the winners and you pick the keyword this week. Sheesh. Okay. All right. So let me, while you think of that. Yep. Um, if you're just hopping in now and you don't know what we're talking about, the keyword um, that John is about to tell everybody, um, you're going to comment it down in the comment section below here on YouTube. Yep. And five people will be entered automatically to win every single one of my FL Studio and music production courses. Mm hmm with that being said, this week's keyword is forklift. Forklift. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got the random ones. Yeah, I love it. Dude. I love it. <laughs> so use it in a sentence. Use it in a joke. <laughs> yeah, please <laughs> use it however you yeah. like. Just comment <laughs> it in one way, in some way, shape, or form, and you'll be entered to win every single one of my FL and music production courses. I guess uh, we have a few more verses to do. Let's, Let's do I mean, this is like the topic of this episode. We keep coming back to this. Yeah, this or that. Yeah, this or that versus music production techniques, FL studio techniques. There was one that I had. All right, so this, this is like, this is a topic that's kind of current. Um, it's kick an 808 mm. versus just an 808. Like, are you layering your kick with an 808? Or are you choosing just an 808 when it's that type of beat? I mean, like I'll put I'll put kicks and eight oh eights together all the time. Yeah, but you I'll, find I'll yourself the, doing that. Like if you had to choose one, right? Would you look for a uh, an eight oh eight that just sounded good by itself, or you, or every time are you going all right? When I have this eight oh eight, I'm gonna put in a kick on top of it. So what I'll do some I'll I'll have like the kick, and then I'll put the the bass or like the eight oh eight in a similar pattern, but not the same. Mm, okay, so, so I, both. So I'll, yeah, I'll do both. That's mm -hmm. that's usually my my trick, because okay. I like the, the shuffle between them. I, for the longest time, I was kick and 808. Mm -hmm. But as of late, maybe it's just the, the samples that are coming out now. A lot of them already have that like transient in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And stylistically, like a lot of beats that are happening and coming out now are like, just 808 with like a punchy 808 though mm -hmm. that almost has like whoever sound designed it sound designed it with a kick in there so sometimes you can look at them you mm -hmm. look at the waveforms you can actually see there's definitely like a kick even a very shortened kick yeah but there's something in there so i don't mean right now i'm probably 50 50 on it but for the longest time it was always like put an 808 it has to be a kick have mm -hmm. to side chain it i have to you know it's just but like <laughs> that was like the routine every single time but i love the idea of uh like doing a different kick pattern than the 808 or the bass pattern. Yeah, yeah. It was just kind of like switch up the shuffle a little bit. Yep. Um. All right, I got one. Mm -hmm. Did that camera go out? This TV went out, or did it just no, time? No, it's on. Okay. The Sony's on. Okay, cool. All three of them are. Um. Claps or snares? Ooh, that's a that's a good one. <laughs> Damn. Or perk or perks. Bro, yeah, like a rim, mm. like a rim shop. Because for a right while, now, people were taking the snares clean out, and it would just be the yeah, percussion. It would just be a thin, like, percussion. Yeah, like a yeah, knock, rim shot. <laughs> Bro, uh, tic -tac. right now, mm -hmm. right now, it's snares. Snares. Yeah. Right now. Hell yeah. I always, I always struggle with that, though, when I'm making a beat. I'm like, damn, do I want this to be a clap beat, a snare beat, or mm. a rim shot beat? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the rim shot just doesn't, like, it's just not enough. I don't know. Right. Other times I'll hear it and I'll I'll hear a beat that just has a rim shot 
And I'm like, damn, like it's just so simple. It just sounds so clean. Mm. I'll use rim shots for accents all mm. the time, though. Oh, yeah. Like if I do snares, I'll do a snare beat and I'll use the ghost notes uh, with rim shots. Or sometimes what I what I've been I did on a recent beat was for ghost notes, instead of using a rim shot or a snare, I'd use a clap mm -hmm. as like the clap would be the accent versus the opposite way around, whereas when I first started making beats, everybody was doing it the other way. It's like mm. clap, and then the snare is always the accent. Right. You know, right the snare right. was always the ghost note. Hell yeah. Switching it up. Switch it up. I'm hearing beats now. Like, you know, uh, there's another guy I wish I, I want to get on. Uh, Chucky Beats. You ever heard of Chucky Beats? Mm -mm. He's dope. Really dope. But he was going through this phase. I don't know if he's still doing it with his content. And we'd be like, no hi-hats in any of my beats. None. <laughs> and the beats would be fire. Yeah, yeah, But there yeah. would not be any hi-hats. He, does he still have, like, a pattern going like a hi-hat would be doing? Or is it just, like, no... Something else, might, just no hi-hat. Like, right, no hi-hat yeah, right, in there. Right. And that's the dope. vibe is still fire. Fuck with that. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And just, I mean, that's cool to just, like, challenge yourself. To be like, all right, the beats I'm going to make this month, I'm not going to put any hi-hats in. Or, like, something yeah. like that. I'm going to put... I'm not going to use 808s in these any of these beats. For sure. No 808 samples. I'm going to use some other kind of bass. So some other kind of bass instrument. But I think we're out of time today. Hell yeah. Yeah, it was a good episode. Thank you everybody for joining, commenting, sharing. Um if you haven't, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and as always, share this with a friend if you, you get, get me. me.